Hello all and welcome to Wild Crochet Designs. My name is Mary and in today's tutorial we are doing part one of a mystery poncho. This is why I'm keeping it closed because it's a mystery poncho. Um, so part one, in actual fact I haven't even completed part two but this is going to be part one. What you will need for part one, oh I've just dropped some yarn, but you will need a spot saver yarn. Now this spot saver yarn we purchase here um, at, at our spotlight store in Melbourne, Australia. However, you can use any 10 ply or any Aran weight or any number four um, from your country, any one of those yarns in your country. So any 10 ply or Aran weight. Okay, this is, um, we used one and a half, sorry, we used one and a half skeins of the white. We used one skein of the yellow and the grey just fell on the floor. <laughs> so I'm not going to pick it up. But we used that. We also need, used and are still using the 5mm hook. The yarn actually calls for a 5mm hook, so that's what we're using. You will need your scissors and you will need probably between 12 and 14 stitch markers. Now I used two stitch markers for you to see where you're popping your hook. But the other 10 to 12 are literally just there for count, counting your stitches. Give you a bit of a tip on how to count your stitches so you don't have to go one, two, three, that sort of thing. It's the way I do it when I'm not on air, all right? Um, and we've got our darning needle, but you won't need that in this tutorial. So don't weave in these ends um, and we will sort them out in part two, all right? So that's pretty much all I wanted to talk to you about. Now, I did want to let you know that um, if you do not have these colours, you're welcome to use any colours you like. Um, and if I wanted to give you a bit of a hint, the yellow part is a mirror image of the grey, if that helps. All right, and you will need to make two of these. So when you complete this part of the tutorial, part one, you'll need to head off on your own and make a second one. All right. And that's all I'm going to say right now, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoy making our mystery poncho and it should be completed some stage in the end of the week, next week or the week after. Thank you so much for watching and good luck creating your gorgeous mystery poncho. All righty, guys, let's get it. Don't worry about any of this. I know it's a little bit daunting staring at that. You can worry about that later. What we really need to focus on at the moment is our chains. All right. Now, I have made the poncho to suit a loose fitting poncho, okay? So you just need to chain on the amount of chains that roughly suits your fitting. Now when I say small to medium, large to extra large and extra large to talls, I mean how tall you are, not so much your width at this stage because your width will be sorted out once you get the length. I know that sounds really weird, but the way the poncho fits, it fits two ways and it's kind of more important that you get the taller way to fit perfectly because that will kind of suit your width and again don't worry about that we'll deal with that later okay but what you need to focus on is if you are roughly between four foot nine and five foot two that's the measurement you need okay so if you're roughly between five foot three and five foot say six or seven that's the measurement you'll need if you are roughly around five foot eight to six foot that's your measurements you will need. These are rough measurements, okay? Where they fit on you is, and I'll just show you quickly, there. They fit from your neck edge to there, and hopefully that makes some sense. If you do extra chains and you are short, it'll drop a little bit further. If you do less chains and you are short, it'll go up a little bit. So you need to decide for yourself, do you want to change the pattern to suit you, or are you happy to stick with these measurements, all right? So roughly around these measurements, don't stress too much. I did 103 and I ended up with 101 double crochets, which is normal, um, or 107 and 105 or 111 and 109. Nine? Yes. <laughs> so you need 101 double crochets for that, 105 and 109 for that. But all you need to focus on is the chains at the moment, all right? So that's pretty much all you'll need to know. I'm going to chain on 103. In actual fact, for this tutorial, I'm just going to chain on a small amount so that you don't have to watch me do the whole poncho for the first part of the tutorial. Further on in the tutorial, we will join our poncho together as a group. So let's start for now. And you'll need your, your um, book and so on throughout the creation of your poncho. All right, 
So grab your first colour. I'm going to be using the grey and you saw what the picture looked like. The grey was up the top for me. If you want to use the yellow up the top, you can. If you want to change your colours, you can do that as well. Alrighty guys, we're going to start off by making a quick slip knot. Grabbing your tail end, wrap it around your finger once, twice, holding it there and holding it down there. Alright, passing your back loop halfway over your finger, like so. Pass the other loop all the way over your finger, grabbing your hook, pop it in your loop, just give it all a big tug, okay? Not too hard, because you need to be able to pass the hook through it in a minute. Now what you're going to do is chain, and now a chain is yarn over your hook and pull it through to the loop that you are in one. I'm going to close up a bit more so you can see it. Yarn over, pull it through the loop, two. Yarn over, pull through, three. Yarn over, four. Yarn over, five. Yarn over, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Hold it there. Grab a stitch marker. Now you can pop your stitch marker through any loop, one loop, two loops, it doesn't matter. It's only there for count. And that's in the stitch that you are in. All right. Then you do another ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Grab another stitch marker and pop it in that stitch. All right. So your job now is to do 10 chains all the way through, popping your stitch marker in every 10th chain. Now that will help you, this is a little tip here, that will help you count at the end of the row. You've got 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and so on, all the way up to your, and there's your um, measurements up there. So what I want you to do now is to chain, continue your chains all the way across, follow those measurements right there, okay, to suit the amount of chains for you. All right, and then meet me back here when you get to your amount of chains and then I will show you what to do for your next, I'm sorry, for your first row. All right, go ahead and do your chains now and I'll meet you back here in a moment. All righty guys, you should have all of your chains. So yarn over your hook. You are now going to do double crochet. So make sure your yarn is over your hook. You have to skip one, two, three, and in your fourth stitch right there, which is a stitch marker stitch, you're going to pop your uh, first double crochet. So one, two, three, and in your fourth stitch, pop your double crochet. Now you can pop it through the top loop, both loops, or the back bump there. It doesn't matter where you put your double crochet, as long as you're happy with it. I'm just gonna pop mine in front for now, and that's that stitch right there okay just one little loop pull a loop through and you have three loops on your hook yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through the last two all right that is your double crochet before you start grab your stitch marker you're not going to put it in the double crochet stitch with those two loops there you're going to put it in the two loops just before it of course mine happened to be tight <laughs> don't worry about what I'm doing here guys I might end up having to take mine out later but pop it in the two loops don't do your chain so tight guys pop it in the two loops just before it like so all right so now you're going to continue these chains here will classify as a double crochet so you've done one two yarn over your hook you're going to continue all the way across doing double crochets pop it in the very next loop whichever loop you used and do your double crochet and that's your third stitch. Yarn over, do another one, four, and yet another, five, six, seven, eight. nine and ten grab 
your stitch marker from your row below and just count again one two by the way you're counting these little v's you see so one two three four five six seven eight nine and your tenth one is right there grab your stitch marker pop it in your tenth and then you are starting again with your next ten yarn over one two three four five six seven eight nine and ten all right grab another stitch marker all right so your job now is to keep going in that manner all the way across once again your stitch markers will help with your count 10 20 30 40 and so on all right so go ahead and do all of your stitch markers all the way across and i will meet you there in a moment Alrighty guys, here we are at the end of the row. I know mine's only a miniature version. I've got 21 double crochets across. Um, you should have these stitches right across. I actually do have on my poncho 101 double crochets across. All right, so you should have what your size was. So yarn over your hook. There's one stitch left for me. So I'm going to pop my hook in that one stitch, pull a loop through, two and two. And you should have a tiny little knot sitting at the bottom that is normal. If you want to give that a tug, you can, and that will just tighten up your knot a little bit. Okay, not necessary. We'll be weaving that in later anyway. All right. But in the meantime, we are going to chain three. One, two, and three. Now you need to turn your work whichever way you like, either that way or you can even turn it that way it's whatever suits you the only reason i do it one way like this is because it reminds me that i've turned the page in a book that is the only reason why i use this this version now don't worry about your stitch markers you're going to rearrange them because we have odd numbers across our row yeah so yarn over your hook in fact i'm sorry you should be putting a stitch marker <laughs> in that loose let me do that third chain again that's really tight <laughs> that stitch marker is not going to fit <laughs> so you do your third chain and then you pop your stitch marker and then you turn your work. So there's your third chain. Now, again, you can turn your work this way or you can turn it that way. Here's my page in a book, like so. Yarn over my hook. I'm going to, let's get a close up for you. We're going to work in these stitches across this way, right? Now the stitches are working and if you give your work a little tug, you can see it, a little space right there. A little space not your big space that tiny little space up the top and it's right through those two loops so yarn over your hook you're skipping that first space because your chains are in that first space in the very next stitch there so you're popping it in the space and you should have two loops on top and the post down the bottom so pull a loop through one two three yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through the last two yarn over your hook Again, you're popping it in that stitch, like so. All right, it's a very basic stitch. Once you get the hang of it, you just, if you can't find it, just give your work a stretch and you can see that little space. Okay, it's super easy after a while. Well, not when you're a beginner, it takes a while to get used to, doesn't it? <laughs> but ordinarily it is easy. All right, so continue along the way Get to your 10th stitch. I don't know what we're up to yet. <laughs> I'll tell you in a minute. <laughs> All you have to do is do 10 double crochets across and then you pop your stitch marker in. All right, now your stitch markers are going to be a little bit off because we've got odd numbers across, yeah? I think that's roughly around 10. Let's see. You're counting your chains. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight, nine, ten. The only reason I knew that is because there's always going to be one or two stitches off. So don't stress, that's normal, yeah? So grab your stitch marker and just pop it in the top of that tenth stitch. Now these stitch markers, they only help you count your stitches across, all right? They're not for anything. These ones here in the beginning help you to return and know exactly where you're going to pop your hook at the end of the row. And the ones at every tenth just gives you the opportunity to go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So you don't have to go halfway through and realize, oh, I can't remember if the stitch count's right. Let's go one, two, three, four. Now yours truly, as I got a little bit more experienced with crochet, I did do my 10 right up to 50. Then I took the 10, 20, 30, 40 stitch markers out. I just tossed them away and counted every 50th stitch because I got a little bit more uh, experience with the counts. I didn't have to worry too much about it, right? But I would still do the 10 if you are new to crochet. Do the 10 in big projects like this. You need to place stitch markers if you want to remember count. Now, if your count is out for your pattern, the only thing that will happen to your pattern is your poncho will curve a little bit. If you've skipped a few stitches, if you've added stitches, it'll turn out like that. So you know what? If you like that look and you've accidentally put an extra stitch, but you're happy with the look, just leave it. <laughs> Don't take it undone. But ordinarily, I would actually do what we crochets call frogging it. Frogging it means taking the stitches back. You are going back, all right? But in the meantime, don't worry about that. If you've got your stitch marker on every 10th stitch, you will not lose count, all right? So now what you're going to do is we're going to continue in that manner all the way across, get to your second last, third last, whatever stitch your count is, get to that very last section there, and I will meet you up here in a moment. Alrighty guys, this is the end of the second row and let me get a close up. You should have your stitch markers all the way across. Now to complete your row, I'm just checking mine to see if it's not split. Looks like it's split a little bit, no? Good. To complete your row, you need to put your last double crochet in that stitch right there. Pull a loop through, yarn over, pull through two and pull through two and you can take out your stitch marker now. All right, so don't stress too much about count now. You should have it all set with your 10, 10, 10 all the way across. That is the end of your second row. Now, believe it or not, that is the pattern throughout the whole entire poncho until we get to the joining section, all right, once we join the pieces together. And you are making two of these, all right? So let's pop that out the way for a minute. And let's grab our book, all right? So we have completed, let's grab my pencil. We have completed that, all of that. You've done all of that. Now your color combination is what you need to work out now. This is pretty much what we're going to do. Our pattern is any color combination of your choice. So any two colors, right? All right and these are the colors. Now it does look a little daunting, but don't stress. All you need to focus on is that right now. All right, let's get rid of all of that. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> Let's put a rubber there. How's that? <laughs> and this is pretty much all you need to focus on. Now, let's bring that up a little bit. The poncho, the, the oh, that rubber's really annoying now. <laughs> um, the poncho itself starts off with the four rows of grey. Now, you've already done your two rows, yeah? So you really, whoops, really, let's turn it that way. Really, you only need to do another two more rows, all right? So you go like this, one, two, three, and four. You've done one row, you've done the second row, you've got two more rows to do, yep. But your job now is to do two more rows of grey, see those two rows you've got there, and then mark them off as you go along. Do one row white and so on, okay? Exactly the same way that we just did that final row, all right? So that final row we did, you're just repeating it over and over again for all these rows. All together, you should have 23 rows, okay? And then you will do a final row of white. But don't worry about the white. You just worry about this for now. And then meet me back here and we'll talk about what happens with the rest of the poncho. That is only half of your poncho and not exactly. The next row over here will be the complete half. All right, but before you go, just quickly, I'm going to show you color change, all right? Alrighty guys, so let's say, for a starters, um, you're at the end of your row, don't do your last stitch, alright? 
when you get to your last stitch this is only for color change yarn over your hook pop your hook in your last stitch where your stitch marker was pull a loop through you've got your three loops like normal yarn over pull through two yep hold it there grab your new color which is the white in in this case so you're just popping your white over your hook and pulling it through to the loop you are in grabbing the tail end of your white and the gray giving them both a gentle tug popping them in your fingers at the back and then you are ready to start your new color chain one two three pop your stitch marker in there like normal like that turning your work the way you turned it before like normal whichever way that was for you yarn over your hook again you're not going in that stitch because we are already in that stitch with our chains you're going in your very next stitch so you pop your hook in that next stitch and just do your normal double crochets all the way across your row now being very careful about this join a lot of people say to me oh we joined but we didn't knot it no we didn't so this throughout your work may come loose like that just give it a gentle tug not too much because it'll be pulling and close it like that at the end of our poncho we will be weaving this end in if you do not weave this end in your work will come undone okay and I'll show you how to do that at the end of our poncho well not so much at the end when we're doing our uh, joining row okay so just leave it there for now so keep your little tail in don't forget you need to cut your gray and then re-add your gray at the end of this white row and you've seen the um, numbers before anyways all right but in the meantime I want you to head off on your own I'm just going to pop that information for you up on the screen towards the end of this uh, section here and you will know the rows you need to do all right so head off on your own and do this amount of rows right now and I'll join you back here in a moment all righty guys wow there it is it's really big now okay and what you should have is your four rows gray one white four gray five white two gray two white one gray two white and two grays now this is half of one side of your poncho all right now the question you need to ask yourself is if you are a tall tall okay if you are really really tall and you wanted yours that little tiny bit bigger in length i would do that now i would add another three rows of gray if you're an extra tall but for everybody else let's just continue all right so for now we have to do um, one color change of white before we change over to a pattern again all right so I'm on my very last stitch here so I'm just going to do the color change and we all need to do this color change uh, after the talls do another three rows gray do this color change all right so pop that there and because i'm a little tiny person i don't need those extra three rows i'm so tiny um all right so there you go grabbing your tails at the back as you would normally do chain one two and three oops turning your work it's a lot bigger now guys so it's hard for me to manage on the table while we're recording <laughs> <laughs> and just do your double crochets like you would any other white row do one row only get to the end of the row and then meet me back here and we will talk about the next color combination all right finish off your row get to your last stitch and I will meet you here in a moment all righty guys here we are at the end of this white row now this is the final row these two rows here were the final rows of our gray okay so talls you probably have five rows here okay and you needed to do this one row of white for, for the taller uh, sizes but everybody else pop your hook in your last stitch start it yarn over pull through two okay hold it there we are now going to change to our very next 
color which whatever color is that you're using i'm using the yellow i'm sorry about that lighting there guys that's the sun changing <laughs> moving from one cloud to the next so pull the loop through like so again grabbing your back tails chaining up three one two three turn your work and once again you are going to don't forget to pop your stitch markers in guys i'm not doing it because i'm being you know lazy <laughs> <laughs> oh, being lazy um, and just continue your double crochets all the way across your row all right I'm going to stop you right here and we're going to talk about our color combination change and what your colors should be now okay let's move all this out the way all right here we go okay so remember before when we had let's get a close-up of this so that you can see this is what we had yeah four talls you did the extra three rows if you wanted to not necessary you may have you may have not what we did just now was that row of white now we're going to turn around and literally repeat that the other way for yellow now if that's all too confusing this is what i want you to do <laughs> Try to do this so it all fits in, you don't see anything else there. You need to do two rows of yellow, two rows white, one yellow, two white, two yellow, five white, four yellow, one white and four yellow. Now, talls, if you are taller, would need to do five rows of yellow here. Everybody else just needs to do the two rows of yellow all right so all you're doing is repeating that the grays back to front so we did that much grays this way the yellows you're going to go up instead of coming down but in the meantime you really only need to so you don't get confused and bring that up a little bit you need to focus on that so I will leave that at the end of this session as well so that you can actually um, just pop it up on your screen and follow as you go along. Remembering to do your one, two, three, four, whatever it is, and then marking them off as you go along. In this case, there's only two. So once you do your first row, you mark it off. The second row, you mark it off. Keeping consistent in that way so that you don't do one row less and one row more. So what I want you to do now, your job is to head off on your own and do this all the way through don't forget tools you need to start with five and not two all right i'm going to pop this information up on the screen for you in a moment and you can head off on your own and do your rows i'll meet you back here once you're done Alrighty guys, here we are at the end of our grey and at the end of our yellow rose oh get excited all right so, whoops, I've just lost a stitch there. Excuse me. Thank you very much. Let me finish up that stitch now. Hello. <laughs> oh, no, actually, that's okay. That's the last stitch. So we'll do that last stitch together. All right. So this is our second last stitch. This is our last stitch, like so. Chain one. Give your work a cut. Oh, I can get the scissors. Hello. Give your work a cut. And that, my dears, is the end of one side of your poncho. All right, now I can't show you that because it's, it's really big. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it in half and I fold it in half lengthwise like that. All right, so that's pretty much what you have considered that plus double. Yeah, now quadruple it. <laughs> All right, so this is the part you just completed now. Let me show you where you are. There. You completed, let me bring that up a little bit, hello, both sections of your poncho. Now, the best part is you've done one, guess what? You have to do another side. Or well, you're going to be lopsided. <laughs> you need to do a second one exactly the same as this one right here i'm loving the yellow oh my gosh i just love that yellow i'm not a big yellow fan but i tell you what for some reason i just love that yellow but there you go so what you need to do is one more just like this and then meet me back here for part 
two and we will join our pieces and we will do a border up the top and around the neck edge and that will be in part two. All right, so go ahead and do a second one just like this and I'll meet you back here for part two. Thank you so much um, for joining me here for part one of our poncho. I so am loving this yellow. <laughs> and don't forget to like, subscribe and share and do all the wonderful things that you guys will pretty much already do for me. And don't forget we have our lives um, at 4 p.m. Wednesday afternoons and 10 a.m. Saturday morning, Melbourne, Australia time. Thank you so much for watching and all I want to say right now is, oh, I look forward to part two. <laughs> Ciao for now.